One of the major problems that we have to deal with in terms of the treatment of type 2 diabetes is to recognize that it's a very, very complicated disease uh, with at least eight pathophysiologic disturbances, uh, which I have referred to in my Banting lecture as the ominous octet. And it should be very obvious, if we got eight pathophysiologic defects, no one drug can correct eight pathophysiologic defects. So we need to be selecting drugs that actually reverse known etiologic problems, and we need to be using them in combination. And we are fortunate today because we have a lot of the newer drugs actually that can be used in combination and really are quite effective. So in my opinion, we have four very, very good uh, drugs. So what are those four good drugs for treating our diabetic patients? Well, at the top of the list, I actually would put the GLP-1 receptor agonist, the SGLT2 inhibitors, and pioglitazone. And those are the three drugs that I actually use in combination uh, to initiate therapy in all of my diabetic patients, irrespective of what the starting A1C is. So what's number four on my good list? You may be surprised, it's metformin. So I brought metformin to the United States in 1995. And at that time, we had insulin and sulfonylureas. It was a fantastic drug. We have much better drugs today. Why do we have much better drugs? These drugs actually, not only do they lower the A1C, but they keep the A1C down for a long period of time. And above and beyond that, they have other uh, advantages. They are cardioprotective, and they also are renal protective. Uh, so what's the big problem in our diabetic patients? What kills them? Uh, mortality from cardiovascular disease, and now we have strong data with GLP-1 receptor agonists, SGLT2 inhibitors, and pioglitazone that they are cardioprotective. We really don't have any data to tell us that metformin is cardioprotective. From the standpoint of renal disease, uh, we also have now very strong data with the SGLT2 inhibitors, uh, emerging data from the uh, GLP-1 receptor agonist, and a new class of drugs, which is not a drug that uh, lowers glucose, uh, but phenenerone, uh, which uh, is very effective in providing protection against cardiovascular disease as well as renal disease. Early treatment uh, uh, of type 2 diabetes is essential because we have an impairment in beta cell function when you first see the diabetic patient. And what's causing that progressive rise in A1C is progressive beta cell failure. Uh, and the other problem is with time, we start to lose beta cell mass. So it is essential that we start early on, not only to improve beta cell function, but make sure that we prevent apoptosis, death uh, of uh, beta cells. We've also learned from the diabetes control and complications trial in type 1 patients, and also from the United Kingdom prospective diabetes study in type 2 diabetic patients, that if you start early, okay, on a long-term basis, you're going to be in a better shape in terms of preventing both the micro and macrovascular uh, complications. And there are uh, very, very nice uh, articles uh, that now have looked in a long-term basis of both the DCCT and UKPDS published uh, in diabetes care within the last three to four months. So what is the take-home message? Diabetes is complicated. Pathophysiology is complicated. We need multiple drugs. We need to use multiple drugs in combination to correct the uh, underlying pathophysiologic uh, disturbances. And we need to start very, very early at the time of diagnosis. Now, uh, as we look forward to the future, I would say we really need to start in the pre-diabetic state. Now, I hate the term pre-diabetes. If your A1C is 6.4, you're pre-diabetic. You think that's any different from 6.5? And we've shown in multiple studies the exact same pathophysiologic disturbances are present in the pre-diabetic as they are in the diabetic. So I'm a strong believer that the earlier you start, the better off you are going to be in terms of getting patients controlled and preventing not only the micro but the macrovascular complications. <music>